Hey, hey there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back. It's another Red Pill Religion podcast. Red Pill Religion, where we say, amongst other things, you do not have to be religious. You really, really don't. It's all right if you're not religious. However, that doesn't mean you get to lie about history, lie about science, and lie about religious people, which you would think would not be an objective, uh, 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 too difficult an objective to handle, but is too hard for some people in the capital A militant atheist group. So we'll be talking about that tonight. Please give us a like. Y'all hear me? Subscribe. Please tell your friends or enemies. Uh, please support our work. We could use our your financial as well as spiritual support. Check us Can out. Can y'all hear me? Yes, and I'm doing introductions now. Oh. Um, and please join us on redpillreligion.com where you will find our PayPal, Patreon, Bitcoin, and maker support donation buttons. Um, last night we had a great stream on Larry Korea and censorship on, uh, in the science fiction field. Um, we are streaming every night. Our, our videos go up, uh, our, our podcasts go up every day on redpillreligion.com along with articles and things, uh, uh and, and stuff by other people, not just ours. So please check us out on redpillreligion.com. Please find us on gab.ai at redpillreligion, maker support at redpillreligion. Find our Red Pill Religion Facebook group. Find us on Patreon at Red Pill Religion. And please, you'll even find the link down in the low bar. Down at the bottom is a link to our free Discord chat server. Come on in, say hi. Anybody who's non-hostile to religious people is welcome. We got atheists, agnostics, Jews, Hindus, um, uh, Christians of various sorts. Uh, come on in. We want to say hi to people. So anyway, give us a like. Give us a subscribe. All right, everybody, now joining us tonight um, uh, in our response video to, who is this guy we're responding to again? Is it uh, Jim Cornett? Cornette? Yes, Cornett. The Jim Cornette experience. Um, hard to believe this guy makes a living doing this, but hey. Um, so, uh, and, and the one who is responsible for that is uh, Mr. Brass wanted to bring this to us. So say hi to everybody, Mr. Brass, and thank you for doing tonight's Time Points. Hello there, everyone. I'm Mr. Brass. Looking forward to debunking this guy. Um, thank you for bringing us the video and providing the timestamps, which is a lot of work. Also joining us is our old friend, going back uh, to the earliest days of this project, our friend with his own channel, Deflating Atheism. Say hi to everybody, Deflating. Hey, everyone. The, the operative word is old, as you all know. Yes, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Deflating atheism is just ancient, man. I, I don't know if there's anybody older on YouTube besides me. <laughs> um, but in any case, um, also joining us is our friend and uh, now one of our team volunteers, mm -hmm. the gay atheist, gay theist, anarchist. Say hi to everybody. Uh, 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 what do I call you on these streams? Gay theist. I'm just going to keep calling oh, you gay theist for now. Fuck you, my grandpa. I love you. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, whippersnapper. All right. Okay. All right, Whippersnapper. Say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm Whippersnapper, also Young Punk, and whatever the fuck you want to call me, I don't care. All right. And also joining us is our uh, our, our sort of deist, Buddhist-y, Christian-y, nothing in particular but interested, uh, our friend Robert, a.k.a. Comrade Dimitri. Say hi. Hello, comrades. I am Robert Freed, a.k.a. the Russian bot known as Comrade Dimitri, broadcasting live from some rundown Siberian East Bumblefuck place. <laughs> Sounds good. And then finally, our, our, our friend White Engine, who's been uh, a real trooper and a real friend to us for a long time. Say hi to everybody, White Engine. Buongiorno. Now, I'm, it is Memorial Day, and I haven't really got, uh, I had gotten to relax because I had to work today. So I'm going to be a bad Catholic again and open a can of beer as we get ready to take down this video. Yes, I'm pouring it into a cup even. Um, so what we did this time, because this is a 20-minute video, and I think we want to experiment Brass just made about five or six cuts that are very short that he thought were relevant. And I think that's pretty good because I don't think we owe this guy or anybody, most of these guys, a whole lot of time. Um, they say the same easily debunked stuff over and over and over again. 
Um, but and, and but I'm going to sit here and drink my beer and see what you guys can come up with as we respond to these points. And then we'll probably just have a roundtable where we keep talking about it. Sound good, everybody? Well, yeah, don't speak up at once. Um, yes. <laughs> all right. Yes. Well, you scared us before. I did, didn't I? I'm sorry. All right. So what I'll do is we're going to play this the part from about a minute 14. I mean, who is this guy anyway? Actually, before we play it, who is this guy? I mean, um, he's a celebrity. He forever. Um, right? He's a celebrity. He's more known for his work in professional wrestling. He's been a manager. Um, but he's also known for just being um, for his political views and for just as also being an atheist. I think him being a wrestling, uh, an, and I assume it's an announcer for like the fake wrestling kind, not like he's a real super serious well, yeah, Rick and Roma. He, he's one of the guys who who announces fake wrestling. And by the way, I like mm -hmm. fake wrestling. I just, you, you know, it's oh, a oh, wannabe Jim Ross. It makes sense too, because atheists, when they talk about history, are are, are as idiotic and moronic as the average, uh, you know, uh, wrestling. Sh sh stage show um so um okay so that's, that's insulting okay. to wrestling stage shows makes sense it really does all right so we're gonna watch from minute 14 to a minute 49 let me know if you have any sound or any issues guys but seriously more damage has been done to the human race by religion than anything else in modern history more the, the the crusades uh oh, God. <laughs> the the more wars have been started more persecution of individual races and peoples more damage has been done to the accumulated knowledge of wrestling history by religion the dis the destruction of the libraries of alexandria you liar um it, oh my god it, it, it's it's not even about uh, religion per se, it's about my religion. Do you, as George Carlin said, do you believe in God? Yes. Okay. Do you believe in my God? No. Okay. Fuck you. Boom. Yeah. And that's not, and, and George Carlin was dumb on that because that's not historically accurate, but I'm going to just sit here and drink my beer. And who wants to go first and taking this trash apart? Well, can I just ask uh, Mr. Brass, uh, was this an anti-religion rant or was this an aside in, in just, uh, just a show where he just went on the topic of religion? Oh, this was an anti-religion rant. Okay, okay, so that was the topic of the day. Yeah. So, of course, he starts out strong with the usual ridiculously shallow, ill-informed talking points about the Crusades and makes up a bunch of other stuff that's not historically accurate. Yeah, well, it's, it's like it's like every dimwit uh, on the internet uh, recites these kind of talking points without without a, 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 a scintillion of evidence to support it. Uh, no, saying that religion is the cause of the most of the world's wars is wrong in fact. It, it is egregiously wrong. It is not even close to being right. And of course, uh, Christians burned down the Library of Alexandria that's another historical canard. I think uh, Carl Sagan was uh, instrumental in propagating that as he was instrumental in propagating a whole lot of anti-Christian canards. But there's actually very little evidence the Library of Alexandria ever burned down. It probably just kind of dissipated. You know, people, scavengers took uh, took various things from it until it was no more. Well, now, now, well here's that, the thing. That was the Sarah Pam that was destroyed. Yeah, I was going to say um, the – the idol, which was, you know, a Serapis, was destroyed by, you know, a Christian mob. However, most historians agree that the um, the actual library was burned down by um, Julius Kaiser in his Alexandrian campaign. He set fire to his own ships as a, as a sort of a um, scorched earth policy, and it ended up, you know, destroying the library. However, a lot of historians believe that many of the books and scrolls that were inside the library of Alexandria made their way to Con Constantinople, where they would feel the intellectual heritage of the Byzantine Empire, the future Byzantine Empire. Weren't the you know Christians I mean, you know, awful? Like, you know, and hell, even on the, the wrestling level, like if he's saying, you know, that Christianity has like ruined the wrestling history, um, a lot of the wrestling history comes from like the South because they're the big, like the big priorities of that. And not really anti-religious people, may I mind you, they're 
a lot of them in the South are really religious Christians, and they've been instrumental in keeping the wrestling business alive. So I don't know where the fuck he gets this idea from that they've somehow been disastrous to wrestling history when they've been like the res- the the ones that have kept wrestling alive and going for a long time. I was going to say and in medieval is, and, re- and wrestling's in the Bible. Remember Jacob and the angel? Yeah, yeah. The, um, Jacob Israel, means wrestles with God. Israel, the, the name, yeah, the Israel, na- the name means one who wrestles with God. Yep. Also, in in Europe, in medieval Europe, during the Christian times, they would have, you know, the tournaments where it wasn't Shut exactly, up, you know, wrestling, but they would up, have, you know. Edu- the- you're educating him. Shut up. <laughs> well, you know, and also, like, only 7% of all the wars that have been said to have been religious caused are, you know, actually in there. Like, um, we've already gone into this, like, but Charles Phillips and Alan Axelrod and their encyclopedia of, of wars only record that 7% of wars have a religious cause to them. Right. So this whole notion that religion has caused this massive amount of wars is ridiculous. Well, and more and the point, and the anti-theistic communists look what they did in in one century than religion did in its entirety. And let me let me add that, uh, uh, man, uh, I forgot what I was about to say. I apologize. Um, man, I only just opened my beer. Uh, the, the, even that that seven percent of so of all wars having a religious basis. If you look at that seven percent or so, you wind up finding there was almost always something else too going on. Usually something involving money, or inheritance, or control of a country, or trade routes. Rarely was it just purely religious. And I was going to say the Northern Crusades happened because um. The Western European countries, you know, that were um, subordinate to the papacy, they wanted to control the trade routes um, that connected the east and the west, the east towards, you know, what was the Rus states or medieval Russia and the western states like, you know, Ger- the Holy Roman Empire, which was Germany, Italy, um, France and all that. Yeah. And, and the trade route was known as the Amber Road. And let me tell you something, anti-religious people anti-religious people have just killed so many more in the name of anti-religion that i actually would like to uh, you know invite jim cornett to come talk cornett to talk to come talk to me about this i plan one day about uh, uh, trying to uh, ask matt dillahunty this uh, given given the the horrific record of anti-religious people who talk just like you um jim cornett should those of us who are religious tolerate you or people who talk like us like are people who talk like you should we tolerate you in our presence should we do business with you should we give you money should we should we even recognize that you have civil rights and if so why should we now it's a real question i mean it's only mildly historical jim cornett why does anybody why does any christian why does any jew why does any muslim zoroastrian Sikh, hindu muslim why does any of them care about you or your problems or your assertions about us why why shouldn't we just um you know support having your rights stripped why not what's Wait a minute, how long how long has this guy been doing wrestling i don't know um yeah i, I imagine he thinks that uh offending christians offending religious people uh, long term is a good strategy for him you know like he's being a bad guy wrestler and offending the audience but in point of fact when i listen to him i just think wow he's awful and pathetic i don't know anybody try to, to, try to do it try to do it in style like stone cold you know three austin 316 well, i've been known to do that stuff in fact i've admitted it quite a few videos i've totally admitted that i went jerry springer i went wwf come on let's go you suck boo you're an idiot I mean, anybody, anybody can do that right um and <clears throat> And so I think that's what maybe he thinks he's doing. He's just being. Oh, I, I, used, I used to love wrestling back in the late '90s, the Attitude Era. That oh, was my yeah. Shit. oh yeah, Rowdy Rod, Rowdy Rowdy Piper, and uh, Hulk Hogan, yes. and Andre. St- Ryan, yes, yes. Stone, yeah. Stone Cold, The Undertaker, The Rock, Triple H, all them. Oh yeah, oh yeah, um, and and here in the Detroit area, we had the Iron Sheik and uh, a whole bunch of other cool wrestling thing 
Yeah. Uh, oh well. I'll tell you what. Why don't we get? Why don't we just move? Yeah. On to the next, uh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Let's go ahead and move on to the next segment just to see what we've got. We've got two forty-seven to three oh six. We're not going to try and do this whole video, but let's see. It, it, the, the idea of an invisible supreme being in the sky watching over. Uh. <laughs> Well, he must be a pretty shitty a supreme being because he's fucked a lot of shit up. Well, absolutely. Um, it the, there was a just thing that busts me out of my mind. There was a thing that Reagan once said, and it was, uh, you know, the scariest words of the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help you. I, I think it's quite scarier to, to hear someone say, you know, I'm here because, you know, because God told me to be here. You know, well, I, I'm here. In well, lady. Um, <laughs> rude. Go ahead, guys. Go ahead. Who's this yeah. lady? I don't Basically, know. said that you know, fuck all those religious charities. <laughs> Did she seriously just fucking say that? Well, she didn't say that outright, but she said, you know, she said no, that. Did she just seriously said what she said on that stream. Yeah, but because what was it you heard <laughs> my my our gay atheist friend. What was it that you just heard from her? From her? She's just saying. That hearing a religious person saying, hi, we're here because God told us so, it's scarier than being told, hi, we're government, we're here to help. Here's the thing. Then again, That's here's I where said. my anthropopolism comes in. Government is not a friend. It is no more than an enemy. I would rather be side by side with my Christian anarcho-capitalist friends. I would rather be side by side with all these people than have government tell me they're here to help me. I'd rather have all of you tell me you're here in the name of God than ever have government tell me that they're here to anarchist. help. Well, you're an anarchist, so of course you tend to think that way. But I mean, <laughs> actually, I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't want to interrupt you, but I mean, this really offends me. Yeah, and I'll tell you why it really offends me, because it's so stupid. I would love to actually challenge Jim Cornette to do a debate with me. And by the way, we would do a WWF-style debate, so I would be happy to 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 be all bombastic and fun about it but you're an idiot sir and your and your co-host there is a, a, oh my god you know back in my days when i was an atheist um there were still times when christians did all kinds of kind things for me and i could see the good things they were doing um in my community and in the world and i did not hate them for it and there was a time when I was actually uh, homeless. Functionally, I was homeless. I mean, I technically had a legal address, but I, it was not good. And I will always remember that me as a Catholic Christian, um, a Mormon fam family took me in. And if you know anything about, you know, uh, Mormonism versus Catholicism, they are, you know, like, you know, we don't even recognize each other as valid Christians, right? And next door, there was a Hindu family um, uh, living next to the Mormon family that I was living with. And that Hindu family, knowing me, a, a, a guy who had, his whole life had fallen apart, and I had long hair, and I had a beard, and I was depressed, and, and, and at times suicidal. My whole life was falling apart. And those Hindus were so incredibly kind and gracious and supportive and would invite me to family gatherings and parties and would give me food and feed me and just check in on me. And it's been years since then. It's been almost 10 years and I still hear from one of them who will, you know, uh, contact me on Skype for my birthday and say, God bless you. And he's a Hindu, right? And, and the Mormon family, I still see them all the time. And they all did so much for me as did some fundamental, I, I rag on fundamentalist Christians, and fundamentalist Christians have done a lot for me. Um, Jews, Orthodox of Jews have done a lot for me. I, I listen to you people and I ask, what damage has the religious people done to you exactly? Because religious people who were not my religion did all kinds of things for me my whole life to make my world better. Oh. All right. I have so, something so, to or anybody else got anything to say? Yeah, well, uh, uh, before before the start, uh, I told Max I, I kind of regretted that I was not uh, here for the uh, friendly atheist takedown. But basically, what you see with all the, with all these little atheist monologues is it's basically the same shit in different packages. So uh, I, I feel I feel like we could be playing like atheist buzzword bingo or something here. I mean, it's the same shit whether you're watching this 
or you're watching like a, a, an edgy uh, anti-religion Bill Burr comedy routine or something, or you're watching Coach Red Pill. It's like, okay, you know he's going to say all the world's wars uh, start with the religion. You know he's going to say something about a man in the sky. I mean, we could be playing bingo with this idiocy. The so, Crusades. <laughs> It is all. It's it's just all so completely fungible. It's like we we could reply to this guy the next week. We could be addressing the same exact idiotic points with some other atheist. Well, I, I'm giving it to you that way. I mean, part part of it. I, I've been pleased to see that uh, other people associated with red pill religion and people not even associated have begun doing what we're doing, which is just pulling up these videos and responding to them and ridiculing them because they need it. Dude, this this reminds me of the the Greek tale of Sisyphus. And is anybody is anybody not familiar with Sisyphus? Oh, I love that story. Yeah. All right, I'll just give it to you anyway. Sisyphus was, you know, this is, you know, ancient. Oh, we're, we're rolling giant turds up the hill. We're rolling enormous turds up the hill. Yes. Yeah, I mean, Sisyphus was was cursed by the guy. He was in hell. This is Greek, by the way. It's a it's a it's a it's a it's a myth that Christians invented the idea of hell. Um, but it was a Greek uh, uh, idea of hell, and Sisyphus was punished. I forget what he had done to deserve it, but basically, he was cursed to spend all of eternity trying to roll a boulder up a hill, and then always, no matter what he did, before he got to the top, it would get out of his hands and it would fall down. He would roll back down. And it seems like answering these atheist videos exactly like Sisyphus, because really we answer the same points over and over and over again, and they don't really respond to them, and that's because they know they have no defensible position. More Christians need to just start doing this. Be so snotty and sarcastic and, and skeptical of these people, because they're not funny, they're not clever, they're not brave, they're just awful. Um, sorry, that's just me. Anybody I wasn't aware. I wasn't aware there was an invisible man in the sky. Are you? Oh yeah, the invisible man in the sky. He's just crushed my entire worldview by saying God is an invisible sky fairy, uh, and religion is bad and evil. Um, yeah. All right, let's play the point from three thirty-seven to four oh one. Mercifully short. Uh, let's see. This whole George Bush and the Republican fucking born again fiasco thing, it drives me out of my mind. Why why wouldn't the Middle East think we were trying to start a holy war? Because that's the that's the vibe that George Bush and the Republican and the Christian conservatives gave off was we're we're trying to destroy your way of life. And those oh, people fuck they, off. they really believe their shit. Uh, you know what? Um, let me let me. Well, first off, when did he? Oh, hold on, hold on. Hitchens was the biggest supporter of the Iraq War. That's true. Uh, Let's see. This is 2017. Okay, so he made this about a year ago. Uh, 2017. By 2000, March 2017, George W. Bush had left the presidency more than eight years previously. It's now more than nine years ago. Do you have anything other than George Bush to talk about? I'm just curious. By the way, I'm 52 years old, and I was heavily involved in politics in the early 2000s. And we did not go to war in Iraq to for religious reasons. I'm sorry. Anybody who says we did is a liar. That's not why we went to Iraq, Jim. Right. And also, George but Bush, w. Bush was mainly cleaning up his daddy's mess during the Gulf War. Right. Oh. And George W. Bush was the one who specifically said that, you know, he coined that kind of asinine phrase. Islam is a religion of peace. Yeah, it was George W. Bush who specifically said Islam is a religion of peace. That the regressive left kind of adapted. <laughs> yeah, now they use it, but they got it from Bush. But you're going to make yeah. it all about all about how supposedly, dude. I mean, when do you do you ever come back into the current decade? I mean, this was contemporary, edgy, cutting edge um, uh, commentary in 2004. <laughs> well, th those were the glory days of, of new atheism. I mean, September 11th was the best thing that ever happened to atheism. And, and like, it was like in 2005, you could be all edgy and, and insouciant and be calling, uh, saying things about the Christian Taliban. And that was very all current at the time. And so uh, it's kind of new atheism has kind of been preserved in amber for the well, last couple years. The thing about the whole Christian Taliban thing, I knew from the start that that was never going to happen because you're comparing, you know, a religion in a, in a developed country versus, you know, another religion in an underdeveloped country. 
So, you know, that I knew from the start that the whole Christian Taliban trope that the new atheists love to spout was, you know, bunk. Well, it's it stupid happen. because... because- Christianity does not even provide a template for running a government, so so a Christian theocracy is just a nonsensical concept. Right. Uh, tell that to the Christians I grew up with. Go ahead, tell us about it, because there are Christians um, who... First off, my grandmother believes all homosexuals should be in jail or executed. I'm sorry, did your grandma really talk that way? Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing she believes, if you're not a Republican and you're not trying to be, create a Christian nation and a theocratic Christian nation, you're a retard. Okay. And, uh, and also, she wants to basically make um, gambling illegal, blue laws back in place for everybody, um, no liquor to be sold, all drugs illegal, increase the war on drugs even more, um, sex outside of marriage illegal, you name it. All well, right, go uh, ahead, Rob. And there's a number of people in front of my parents' church that do believe in that also. I'm not talking sure about old people. Sure, you know, cool. sure there are, but go ahead, Deflating. What were you about this? No, I was just going to say, yeah, I mean, that that's all unfortunate, but I, I mean, that those are not dictates from the Christian religion. No, those are her values that she wants to impose that may be informed by her Christian faith. But it's not like, okay, this is in the Bible, therefore – we could we could use this as a template for for running a government the same way you can with Sharia law. She looks to the Old Testament for that. Well, and, and 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 that's fine. The only thing I would say about that is is that well, Grandma's got a right to her opinion. That's number one. Um, number two, uh, I mean, and actually, I'm going to really reemphasize that she really does have a right to her opinion. I will go back to a point I've tried to make. I even made this on the non sequitur show and for some others is like, if you know, if you truly believe in freedom and individual choice and all that, uh, and free speech and all that, listen, if grandma thinks that she thinks it right. Oh, yeah. The only thing I would, the only thing I would point out as a counter there is, is that, you know, it was August Eve of hippo going back, you know, 1600 years plus, I think, you know, who said that, Laws against things like pornography, because pornography has been around. Pornography was around in in sixteen hundred years ago. It was, and oh, and yeah. prostitution and, and 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 all that stuff um, were probably not very productive. And you know, um, Jesus hung out with prostitutes. Well, Jesus hung out with prostitutes. That's exactly right. So have I, for that matter. Um, <laughs> Same. No, I don't mean I've hired them. I mean I I, I, I talked to them. Right, Max. Um, no, actually, I never would hire a prostitute, but but that's another conversation. It's not even a moral thing. Even when I was an atheist, I told myself I would never, ever hire a prostitute because I thought it would even me to hire a prostitute. Um, but that's, that's a whole conversation. To, um, huh? Hire one to go have fun with, not actual, not have sex, just go have fun with. Dude, it's actually shocking how many guys will actually hire a prostitute just to keep them company or cuddle with them. A lot of guys are like that. That's a really yeah. deep conversation we ought to have on a men's rights thread because it's really true. Most guys actually do want the emotional component with a woman, and it's a lie to say they only want sex. But you know what? That said, man, now, now we're off hand. Um, bottom line is, you, dude, you just claim something about Bush, even if you don't like Bush – that's just a total lie. And, 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 and like, really, really, ragging on George W. Bush now when we've had eight years of Obama and two years of Trump. Uh, uh, um, okay, why don't we go ahead to... Oh, I wanted to say something real quick. Um, sure, Obama, I, Obama, Barack Obama, um, he fucked up the Middle East more, in my opinion, than, than George W. Bush with his Arab Spring policy, which overthrew a lot of those secular Middle Eastern and rulers like Muammar Gaddafi and um, he tried to overthrow Assad so you know and that's what caused the um, the European migration crisis that still goes on to this day and caused a whole bunch of terrorism and you know caused the rise of ISIS I don't know that we need to get into a back and forth of, of which president did bad or good but I will just say it's it's ridiculous, Jim, to listen to you pretend that politics was ever that simple. Right, but, right. And I'm saying that, you know, if he's going to hold, you know, George W. Bush responsible for that, then he also he also has to hold um, Obama for the same kind of crap. 
and Reagan. Yeah, no kidding. All right, so let's go ahead and play the next segment, 1012 to 1116, the Treaty of Tripoli. This should be fun. You know, to some of the listeners, there's a thing called the Treaty of Tripoli, uh, which was, I believe, written in 1796 oh, and adopted by the Congress in 1797. And this was brokering the peace between the United States and Tripolitania at the time, um, which is now uh, Algeria, I believe. And it was submitted to the Senate by John Adams and ratified unanimously. And it, it included this statement. As the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion, as it has in itself no character or enmity, enmity against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslims. Uh, these were Muslims that we were fighting at the time. And as, uh, the said, as, as, <clears throat> and as the said United States never entered into any war or act of hostility against any Mohammedan nation, that was the word they were using at the time, it is declared by parties that no pretext arising from religion, uh, religious right. opinion shall ever produce an interruption of the harmony existing between the two countries. And that first sentence, not in any sense founded on the Christian religion, unanimously passed by the U.S. Senate. Oh, gosh, I've been hearing this one for years. Who wants, I actually want to hear Robert address this, um, but also anybody else. Oh, gee, um, it's true that, that the Treaty of Tripoli was passed to kind of satiate and um, pacify, you know, what they felt were religious undertones to the um, the whole anti-Barbary pirates thing. And so the Founding Fathers, you know, they wrote that in to, you know, to tell the the Muslims in the um, in what is now Algeria that they were not at all hostile to Islam, and um, and they're not trying to be theocratic in any sense. However, um, Christianity Christianity did play uh, a massive founding role in the U.S. government. We're, we were when they say that we weren't founded as a Christian nation. They obviously meant like they didn't want a state church, for example. Yeah, like, they like did not the want British a state church. Had. That's what they meant. Yeah, because the British had the Anglican Church, where where one church dominated all others, and that was kind of. And here in the colonies, we had all kinds of you know Christian denominations. We had Catholics, we had Quakers, we had um, Methodists, we had Baptists, etc. And you know that's why they um they kind of chose church state separation as the um. As you know, the um, establishment, so to say, but um, no, religion was important to um, the foundation of the early American Republic. John Adams said, "Dated." I always th I always thought it was James Madison. It was actually James um, John Adams. Um, John Adams said that our constitution that quote our constitution was meant for a um, moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. And in fact, you can find statements like that from George Washington. You can even find statements similar from Thomas Jefferson, James Madison. I, I, it goes on and on. Even some of the most influential founders were not religious, but they viewed religion as something you needed to have respect for and you needed to encourage and inculcate. And if you <laughs> If you see a quote from uh, uh, Thomas Jefferson or something plastered across the billboard by the American atheists, that quote is probably a lie or a misattribution or something taken grossly out of context. Because a atheists love their founding father quotes that, that are uh, basically apocryphal or taken out of context. But, but the founding fathers own slaves, but they only bitch about slavery when it's referred to in the Old Testament. I... I oh, yeah. I mean, if I could also add something to that whole thing is like the Treaty of Tripoli was an 18th century um, treaty between the American with the Muslim pirates. And basically what they were saying is like, yeah, we're not a Christian theocracy because the Muslims that they were talking to were they believed because they were under a Muslim theocracy. So the, they were more or less saying that they're not a Christian theocracy. And also, when you actually do look into the history, like the renegotiated renegot version of this treaty that happened eight years later did not include this article. And then the the Arabic version, the Arabic version of this, it also didn't include it. So there was no agreement on this art particular article. So therefore, the entire thing was invalid to begin with. I think it's also worth pointing out, I think it's hilarious that atheists have this little echo chamber where the same five points just bounce around in perpetuity. 
uh, the Treaty of Tripoli is not active law. It is not the law of the land. So the fact that they have to take this one clause in one sentence in a piece of non, not even a piece of active law, it, it just speaks so much about about their desperation to prove their points. And none of the, none of the founding fathers were atheists. Half of them were Christians. Oh. Half were deists. No, and and, 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 and and the deists among them were still operating on Judeo-Christian values. Exactly. And respect for them. And have respect for them. And also, there's another... Ex, ex, except uh, pain, but the rest of the founding fathers couldn't stand them. Yeah. 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 Right. The founders couldn't also, stand I wanted them. to say... Um, Go ahead. I wanted to say, also, there's actually, there's actually another um, treaty I, I, that just came to my mind, and I tried to find it, and... I think I just found it. It was called the Treaty of Tunis, and it was actually um, established later than the um, the Treaty of Tripoli. The Treaty of Tri Tripoli was um, it was signed on November fourth, seventeen ninety six, and basically ratified on um, and it took effect on June tenth, seventeen ninety seven. There was there's another treaty here called the um, Treaty of Tunis, uh, which was um, ratified and signed on. Um, August 28, 1797, and here's what it says. It, it begins, quote, God is infinite under the auspices of the greatest, etc. cetera. Um, here we skip to those reign may God um, prosper until the end of ages, etc. I'll just skip down to the important part. And the most distinguished and honored president of the United States of America, the, the most distinguished among those who profess the religion of the Messiah, note that part, of whom may the end be happy. We have concluded between us, etc. It may as well be argued that the religion of the Messiah is adopted by this treaty. Note that part. Okay. Now I, you could. Now the term uh, Messiah could be kind of loose, um, loosely defined. You could say, you know, it refers to all the Abrahamic religions because all the Abrahamic religions believe in in the Messiah, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Right. They were in no way being hostile to Christianity. It's, it's, it's really interesting, too, because when they when you even look, you know much about that period of American history when that treaty was ratified, which, again, has, as deflating atheism says, has no active force in American law, was real specific. It was with the Barbary pirates. The Barbary pirates on, on the Barbary coast were Muslims, but they were not theocrats. And in fact, those Barbary pirates disliked some Muslim theocrats. So when they signed something saying, I mean, actually, if you look, the treaty that says uh, from the Barbary pirates, actually, the one they're quoting says both that the United States is not founded as a Christian nation and says that the Barbary pirates aren't really necessarily founded as a Muslim nation because they're not. What they were both doing was recognizing that we're not theocrats. And, and they go on with the separation of church and state, which uh, it was to protect the church. Yes, and they're, they're all going to, you know, something like that. Look, basically what that treaty meant was, hey, we agree with you. This is not a religious war. We have a disagreement over some stuff. That's, that's really all that meant. Um, yeah. Uh, it didn't mean they were, I mean, and, and, and tr truly, they did not think of themselves as a theocratic state. They did not think, oh, yes, we're, 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 we're going to do everything through the Bible first. But uh, these guys are being so dishonest in how they look. Well, up. you know, no one argues that the United States was um, a Christian theocracy from as far as I tell. At best, Christians will say that the, the social values of, of Christianity have played a great part in the founding of um, the United States, which we can have a debate on that. But I mean, you know, no Chris, not even the fundamentalists I know say that they believe that like, America was intended to be a Christian theocracy. Yep, exactly. I'm um, okay. French. I'm sorry. Do you have something to say? I must have grown up in the French then. The yeah. Fundamentalist. And hi from my mother and father. Yeah, we probably can't, we, we can't hear you, Gatheus. Sorry, you're breaking up real bad and you're hard to hear. Me? Yeah, no, really, I can't hear you. So we're going to have, and not being rude, but we're probably going to mute you because you're making a lot of noise too. Um, uh, but what, what, what our gay atheist anarchist friend Derek there was just saying is, is that in his family, 
he knows Christian theocrats who think in these very simplistic terms, we're a Christian nation, we're supposed to do it that way. Uh, we, we, you and I ought to have a whole stream about that, Harmsy, um, because there are a subset of Christians who think that way. There, there really are, and, and and we ought to talk about them. The, the only thing I'll say about that, and I would let you say more, Harmsy, but you're making too much noise. Um, so like I said, maybe we'll come back to it. But I, I agree there are Christians who think that way. I just think it's easy to get a distorted view of how important they are, how influential they are, um, even in the halls of power. But okay, let's let's go. Can ahead. I just can I just interject a point? I don't want to get I don't want to get too off topic. But but the whole the whole specter of of theocracy is only brought up when uh, when uh, uh, the the secular liberals encounter something they don't like. Uh, Mr. Brass, you're making obnoxious sounds too. <laughs> Sorry about that. But yes, I, I mean, like, if they don't like, like, my position on abortion, that's theocracy. But the Bible also instructs us, they, they, they would actually criticize us for not being Christian enough if we don't endure, uh, uh, like, advocate, like, a, 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 a universal health care or something. That's, that's part of the biblical, uh, uh, you know, urge to, to take care of the poor and, and, the, and the needy and the sick. Well, in that case, we're not Christian enough. Even though the, those are Christian uh, uh, values, is to take care of the poor and the sick. Uh, but that's not theocracy when when we uh, enact their own little uh, uh, social welfare programs. And yeah, they don't like George W. Bush because he he brought his evangelical faith uh, up as a topic of conversation. Well, like it or not, Obama talked about his Christian faith too. But since they agree with him, it doesn't become an issue. So they're not actually opposed to religiously uh, uh, informed uh, uh, policy in general. Just when when they don't like it, that becomes an issue. Yes, in fact, uh, uh, just just to mention it, Hillary Clinton claimed to be a Methodist, and uh, uh, Barack Obama went out of his way to show himself going to church. So why were you not afraid of Obama and Clinton as theocrats, Jim? Just curious. Were Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton theocrats? I mean, Hillary, even in the 2016 uh, campaign trail, claimed that she still, uh, you know, read the Bible all the time. Uh, I, I, you know, at what point uh, do you, were you scared that Hillary was a theocrat because she bragged about uh, being a Methodist and, and going to church? Just curious, Jim. Okay, let's see. 1331 and 1401. We're going to get to learn about Moses and the prophets here. The, the, if you have you ever noticed, also, anybody who comes up with a religion from Joseph Smith to Moses to anybody else, they always go up top of a mountain or out in the woods and they're all alone and they come back and they say, hey, I just talked to God. He's got a whole list of shit he don't want us to be doing anymore. <laughs> Nobody ever witnesses this. And people take it as, as you know, on the surface of it as, as legitimate fact. Okay. All right. He is into wrestling, isn't he? Who wants to say something about that? Mountains were revered as the high places where people would go to back in the uh, ancient Near East. They were revered as, uh, you know, places that the gods dwell, apparently. But they were also significant as they were signified high places. <clears throat> well, well, even even the atheist Nietzsche had Zarathustra go on top of a mountain. So I mean, I mean, it's not exclusively even religious or theistic. It is normal in humans to think of higher as better and lower as not. That's universal in all human cultures. Um, yeah. back when I, back when I was agnostic, I would usually joke about that, about Moses going out the mountain. He's like, okay, I'm going to go get the 10 commandments. Now I'll be right back. Sure. <laughs> That's the thing too. I mean, like I used to, uh, some religious humor is just funny and religious people will tell each other jokes like that. Uh, I mean, like, I wouldn't be offended by that joke, even I'm a religious man now. You you, you liked that joke when you were agnostic. Fine. Um, that joke would I, I still like that joke on the, um, you saw that uh, movie, The um, History of the World, Part 1. I, I, I do like Mel Brooks in History of the World. What was the one you're talking about? You know, the Moses scene? 
where he broke oh, it. He was oh, like, uh, I, I, got, I got these uh, 15, and he smashed the tablet. He's like, oh, 10, 10 commandments for all to obey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, is that no matter what joke you make, uh, uh, you can't take too much credit in the in the intelligence of, of the people who are listening to you. Because I remember I, I used to make a joke about the kind of anglicized names that we use in the Bible. I used to say like, "Oh, do you really think uh, uh, two thousand years ago in in the in the Near East people were actually called Josh? Do you actually think, you know, hey Josh, you know, this is what I say to you?" And so that was a joke. But now I discover there are atheists who actually think that's an argument. Is that no? They didn't actually have these names that we use nowadays, and they no, used- it, it was Yash. It's all made up. Yeah, um, I- yeah. And what's another funny thing is like he using this whole thing to discredit Moses and stuff when he forgets that Moses had done so many miracles and the fact that he had brought the slaves out of Egypt and stuff that they had no reason to distrust his his claims. So, I mean, they weren't believing just, like, on blind faith that what Moses was saying was true. They had plenty of evidence of him doing miracles, bringing them out of Egypt, like, splitting the seas. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, they had plenty of, they had plenty of reasons. <laughs> Excellent point. Across, Excellent point. They had just walked across the Dead Sea and seen the waters parted and watched. No, it was the Sea of Reeds, not the Red Sea. Okay, fine, whatever. Um, watch them part the sea and walk through it and watch Moses's, um, you know, troops be drowned and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, I mean, you know, so, you know, they weren't, you know, just believing like on blind faith what Moses said. Like, it's not like Moses was just some random dude that came up to a group of people and said, hey, guys, I just came from a mountain and this is what God said. But here, take my word for it. No, they knew Moses. They knew him for a long time and they seen him perform so many different acts that it would have been stupid of them to think that he did not talk to God. Hold and, and on, Abra- Abraham didn't come across God on a mountain. Yeah. He just talked to him out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. You, you uh, will see this throughout the Bible is that nowhere is a blind faith advocated as a virtue. Uh, uh, when people are asked to believe, it is it is always uh, based on a, like a demonstration of divine power. Oh, yeah, they start collectively arguing about downing Thomas. Oh, Aaron, my God. You notice that? You notice that as of late? Well, yeah, that was in the other video we did. Yeah, and, and, and no, they said that Doubting Thomas was cast as a bad guy. I don't, I don't know if you <laughs> thought Doubting Thomas was a bad guy. It, it it goes along with our narrative. Just go along with it. Yeah, <laughs> it's just stupid because they clearly just don't know what they're talking about with this stuff. No, it is um, um, Doubting Thomas, uh, Saint Thomas the Apostle, is one of my favorites because he just literally shows how. Because I'm actually kind of an insecure skeptic. I'm always skeptical of things, and 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 doubting, Th- you know, doubting Thomas, Thomas the Apostle, Saint Thomas. To me, he's a very sympathetic character because he was afraid to believe the evidence of his own senses. Like he he wasn't a skeptic though. He was a denialist. He had the evidence in front of him, in front of his face, but he denied it. Well, an insecure skeptic, a, a neurotic skeptic. Mm-hmm. I I don't think he was being. Uh, just stubborn like he doubted him. no no he, he was afraid because he uh he abandoned jesus and he was like no I'm, i must be hallucinating i saw him die well right and he was doubting himself and he was doubting his senses and he was doubting his fellows and he wound up recorded as that because i, I really think he was recorded with that tale in the gospel so that people would see look even the hardcore skeptic even the one who's having a hard time believing anything he has a place here too well, I mean, down, even if you look at it, like, here's what he had. Like, he he had, you know, he had his closest friends telling him that Jesus rose from the dead. He's seen the empty tomb. He had also, during Jesus' lifetime, had seen Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead and perform other miracles. So, I mean, he had plenty of reason to think that Jesus was serious about, like, saying he was going to rise from the dead. And he didn't want to believe it, so he said, I won't believe it till I can put, you know, touch it and see it myself. And But what did Jesus do? Did Jesus curse him? Jesus gave him a little bit of a hard time, but he didn't give him a real hard time. He's like, come and look. Here it is, man. In other words, Jesus wasn't mad at him. I mean, 
he might have been a little condescending, but he's like, no, come, look, here, it's me. Really, it's me. I actually think it's kind of a tender moment, actually. Um, and they, they, less, they, they lose all subtlety on it. They just lose all subtlety on it. <laughs> all right. Just all right. Last bit that, we, that Brass picked out for us. 1738 to 1820, religion is a means of controlling people. By the way, Jim Cornette, atheism is a much more effective way of controlling people than religion ever has been. But okay, let's go ahead and play this last bit so we can comment on it. <laughs> Maybe the best thing that Christ can do for us is having people realize that his concepts were great, but virgin births talking snakes garden of eden uh, earth being created in six days maybe not uh, but the idea because when the bible was written there were no police forces there were no way to control people you couldn't control people from murdering and slaughtering people as in the dark ages except by saying well when you die you're going to a bad place with fire and hell and eternal brimstone and damnation forever. That's the way you control people. Well, now we're a little more civilized. So maybe we should go to the Christ-like tendencies and beliefs of love your brother. Come on, everybody. Shine on your brother. Everybody get together. Try to love one another right now. Let this go. And that's right maybe now. Ought, right now. Maybe we ought to follow the principles instead of the medieval tactics. Okay, so I'm going to let other people comment on this, but let me let me let me comment on your medieval tactics, Jim. You are you are uh, making the most primitive um, uh, um, uh, showing of what the people you're criticizing are. Uh, in other words, you're a hypocrite, sir, because you are giving the the worst version of your opponent's arguments versus the best. You're strawmanning, you're going out of your way to not allow people to explain what they think. In other words, you're doing what you accuse others of. Jim Cornette, I, I dare you to come on and talk to me, sir. I will not turn you into a Christian. I will not turn you into a, you know, oh, I'm a Bible boy and I believe everything in this Bible because I read it out of this Bible, so it must be true. I ain't going to tell you and turn you into one of those at all. But dude, Bible man's in the Bible. Bible man's in the Bible. I got my answer. You know, John 3.16. That's all you need to know. Just John 3.16. Do you know John 3.16, boy? Do you know John 3.16? Do you believe that? Okay, you're saved. Otherwise, you're not saved. Yeah, yeah. I'm not one of those guys, and neither are most Christians. And you know it, Jim Cornette. So when are you going to have a real conversation with a mature, knowledgeable man rather than this straw manning you're doing? Hell is no more a place of fire and brimstone than heaven is a wedding banquet or a vineyard. Those were idioms used by Christ in order to illustrate his the, the seriousness of his point. There you go. Who else has something to say? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. You go, um, you go, Robert Re uh, Fried. Robert Fried. But he mentioned the, the so called dark ages. I mean, oh, God. There were no this dark ages. Most historians drop the usage of the term the Dark Ages as a pejorative. There were many scientific advances that came out of the so-called Dark Ages, such as the, the founding of the university. The Catholic Church um, uplifted, or they lifted the ban on the, um, on, uh, um, gosh, I can't think, um, dissection, human dissection, that's what it was. They um, uplifted that ban that the pagan Romans had previously put on. And, you know, people were allowed to experiment on human bodies in the Middle Ages. Um, yeah, there was just so many um, advances in the medieval times. Anyway, you as know, for, the talk, for, the, for the talking snake bit, that was the, the term used for the serpent in Eden was Nahash, which also means the shining one, the light bringer, Lucifer. Let me mention for Jim and his audience here, not that I think Jim reads books, because I don't think Jim Cornette reads books, and I don't think Jim Cornette re especially reads books that challenge his ideological worldview. Um, but if he's inclined to read a book that is well-referenced in historical, try James Hannum's God's Philosophers, How the Medieval World Laid the Foundations of Modern Science, which is a real good history book, Jim. You might want to try learning how to read books. 
you're an atheist, so you probably don't read books well, also, much. This, this, well, this they, they read they read uh, anti they read anti theist propaganda books. Well, right. Also, but, well, I mean, in the chat, like in the in this video, the whole video, he does go into how he read the God Delusion by Richard Dawkins and claim that uh, it, you know that it was so why it was so scientifically and it goes over so many people's heads. I said. <laughs> So, I mean, yeah, 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 Jim, if that is what goes over your head, I think you need, I don't, I think, you know, the books that Max may be recommending might just blow your mind. Also, like, um, like, history, like, the, like the New Atheist Denial of History. He should read yeah, that Yeah, that's one. a good book to read. Also, his, this is something that Inspiring Philosophy brought up when I was live streaming with him the other day. Um, the History of Medieval Worlds is a good book. And anything written by Ronald Numbers and David Lindbergh. Yeah, I mean, and so another like thing that he goes into is like, you know, how religion is such as good, like, he says that there was no police officers or there was no people back then, like, to, like, scare the people into believing into these things. But here's what he doesn't recognize. Back when the Bible was being written, like, in Job and Genesis level, like, time, people were scared to death that they were going to be killed off by other people by other tribes and they were going to have their religion taken away from them. They fought like tooth and nail with different tribes for like the entire time during these periods. So they did not lack fear at that time. They were plenty afraid of many things. And part of Genesis and Job portray this. Um, so they, this whole thing, like they were just, they needed a reason to be afraid. It's just stupid. And then they it's had like, plenty like of things. Go ahead. You know, and they also had like religion is probably the worst way to control people because it gives people too much diversity. Like unlike communism or a particular political party, you can only be this with a certain level of um, doctrines without there's no possible way you can interpret them differently. And right, if you do why... try to interpret them differently, you'll be killed. And like, so I mean, if, Religion is such this way of controlling people, then it fails miserably because there is so much diversity, even among different sects of particular religions. Right. That's why. Um, that's why the um, many of the totalitarian regimes of the past and present, and even up today, you know, with the present, they try to eradicate, you know, religion or put a, you know, put he severe restrictions on it, such as the French revolutionaries tried to. Um, they have something known as the the dechristianization campaign of France, where they tried to eradicate um, French Christianity from the country, and it you know was really violent. The German Nazis had the Kirchenkampf, which was the the church struggle or struggle against the churches. That was the Nazi campaign against you know Christianity, and the communists had all their anti-religion campaigns. Well, if you want to control a populace, it's probably a lot more effective to tell them that they they are these predetermined leaves being blown around by the wind, rather than that they are divine beings created in the, in the image of a loving God with free will and and all yeah whatnot. So uh, I, I again I feel like we're playing bingo here. He's, he's throwing out these talking points, and I'm just marking them off the board. We got the talking snakes. We got that out of the way. Then we have this. <laughs> a big uh, a sociological proclamation that religion was invented to control. First off, I, I, where's this evidence that religion was ever invented? That someone was just sitting around and decided to come up with the idea of religion? That's another uh, uh, atheist kind of uh, talking point. If it was uh, invented, it is, it is a fifty thousand year old invention. Yeah, we, we really go, going very far back. And uh, I, lo I love the pseudo-sociology. I, I always say the, the atheist favorite sciences are, are pseudo-psychology and pseudo-sociology. And so uh, uh, religion was created to control because they didn't have police forces back then. Okay, is there any evidence to back this claim up? Or are you just saying it because it sounds good to you? Or you heard some other atheist say it? I, I mean, it's completely ridiculous. Uh... Yeah, I mean... He, well, like you know, the, he's the uh, type like of the guy that he finds, you know, he finds Bill Maher and George Carlin to be the top prominent thinkers on matters of religion. So, yeah. <laughs> right. My problem with new atheism is like these new atheists and their, you know, adherents, their little loyal followers, they think they know everything about, you know, 
the sociology of religion and the history of it. And to some, and and someone religion. who knows jack shit about philosophy, the God delusion might seem right. impressive. Yeah, that's all they think they, you know, they think they know everything about the history of religion and sociology of religion just by reading a few books by Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens. Really, the only thing that the God delusion got right was the name of its title. And that's about pretty much it. Like, every, like everything in the contents of that book are demonstra almost demonstrably false and stupid. Or oh, yeah. trivially true, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In fact, uh, somebody else mentioned it, but I keep mentioning this book, The New Atheist Denial of History by Borden Painter, who beat Holocaust denialists in UK libel court. And he goes into real great detail about how um, Sam Harris and Richard Dawkins and uh, Hitchens and Hitchens and Michael Shermer and Steven Pinker and quite a few others just lied about history. I have a big question for you, Jim Cornette. If your atheism is so powerful and so indisputable, um, why do your big heroes have to lie about history? Why do they have to misrepresent science? Why do they have to misrepresent what history actually says? Why? Why lie, Jim? Uh, I'll actually, we, we should probably be wrapping up here, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an open invitation to Jim Cornette to talk to me publicly or privately. In fact, privately would be better. Because here's what I'm going to say to you, Jim. Uh, Ten years ago, when you signed on for atheism, it looked like a good cash cow. Plus, you could... Uh, get your, uh, you know, your revenge for whichever fundamentalist preacher in your family or your friendship, um, you know, told you you'd go to hell forever if you didn't believe what they said. You got your revenge out. You got to be about my age now, right? In your 40s or 50s somewhere. Um, uh, you're not edgy anymore, Jim. You're not edgy. You're not clever. People have heard your arguments and those of your um, uh, uh, heroes and found them wanting. Atheism is a dead um, market. It's a market that's dying and dying fast. You no longer seem clever. You no, seem, no longer seem funny. By the way, if you see people like uh, Shannon Q or some of those others, point this out to them, please, because it's true. You guys aren't funny anymore. You're not edgy anymore. You're not clever anymore. In fact, you're boring. In fact, I'm going to say fucking boring. All of you. All of you are fucking boring, whether it's Godless Engineer, Godless... I like Godless Cranium. He's an all right guy, but he's boring. Um, Logic, you're boring. Jim Cornette, you're boring. Um, Matt Dillahunty, you're boring. Essence um, of sophistry, rationality, rules. Rationality, rules. <laughs> you're boring. You're in your 30s. Well, to be fair, some of them I don't think are trying to be um, edgy. Well, they are trying to be edgy, but well, you don't think they're trying to be edgy? Well, I think, you know, like Essence of Thought is, but I don't know. I don't think, like, um, Godless, um, engine, not Godless, oh, well, um, God Godless Cranium and Shannon Cube is. I don't think that Godless Engineer, engineer thinks he's uh, edgy. I suspect well, he's, he's edgy. He's, he's not edgy. What's up, edgy man? For who? Edg edgy for who? Motherfucker, it's 2018. Okay? This shit was edgy in 2005. Yeah, that's what they're trying to be, though. Yeah, they're trying to... Be being edgy in 2018 is being an actual Nazi. <laughs> the bar has been raised. <laughs> okay, right, get punched by Jim, Jim, really, how old are you? You've pissed off your grandmother. You've offended your grandmother. It's <laughs> <laughs> 50 cents. You know, the, the local preacher down the store. Do you actually think you're clever and speaking to today's independent <laughs> now? Do you really? Aaron, Somebody asked Aaron Noel Plum and Carrier and them all to try to be edgy. Oh, my God. Someone asked Noel Plum that question. Somebody asked fucking, uh, you know, I mentioned her before, Shannon. Someone asked Bionic Dance. Somebody asked fucking TJ Kirk. Do you think you're edgy? Do you think you're clever and witty and the, the, the new voice of the new generation? Are you old, middle-aged, aging, gaining weight, um, and looking pathetic as what seemed clever to you more than 10 years ago 
now just looks pathetic, mean, small-minded, bitter, and ugly. <laughs> Sorry, that was a panted at Max Ran, but I'm going to give it to you. You people are not funny. You're not clever. You're not. You're not. You're not original. You're not challenging. You're just annoying. And in most cases, you're fucking pathetic. Jim, you suck. Get a new gig. I'll help you. All right, someone Max, can, can you can you drink for every hangout? I don't really like this, Max. Can you drink for every hangout? We love you, Max. Come play with us. We like this, Max. Yeah. Jim Cornette, you're boring. You're an embarrassment to your grandmother. It's the Red Pill Religion Smackdown. <laughs> it's more fun than he tried to be. Oh, this is great. Dude, yes. Dragging out some of these talking points is like somebody going down to the Kobo Arena um, and getting in a time machine going back to the 1990s and saying, Look, back when, back when life made sense, right? Look. This guy, the Iron Sheik, he's really hip and cutting edge, and the kids today will love him. Well, you're pathetic, Jim, and so are most of the rest of you. You're not edgy, you're not funny, you're not clever. I'm just repeating myself, but really, you're fucking boring, and in another 10 years, nobody's even going to want to hear you. Why don't you try something new? For example, try what I do, making fun of atheists like you, because really, sir, you're hilariously stupid and pathetic. You really are, and so are most of your co-religionists. I, I suspect right, you will stop ranting now. I, I suspect you will not be accepting your invitation to, to have a one-on-one. -on -one. He Badly. ought to, because I can help him make more money. And by the way, if, the, if, if, if cowardly Steve McRae would talk to me, because he won't, uh, I've tried. I would actually show him how to make more money, too, with his great debate society. But none of these guys can do it. They're all too cowardly to say, wow, maybe I need a new paradigm. This is like, like, what, like, like uh, back when uh, Bret Hart was going heel. Yeah, who Bret Hart is. Oh, he's a wrestler. You know, like, like he'll, get, he'll get the um, reference. I believe you. I believe you. I... I, I uh, in the I, beginning I, of the Attitude Era, you know. I actually mean it. If any of these guys come to me, I'll help them find ways to make new money. But let me tell you what. Shitting on Christians is not – and shitting on Jews and I'm Orthodox-believing Jews. I mean, shitting on Muslims even is not – I mean, there's some value in that. But even that's not a growth industry. Um, I'm telling you, start making fun of secularists. Because Jim, Jim Cornette, I'll tell you, Gen Z – the young kids today, the real kids coming up today, oh, no. oh, they no. cannot oh, no. stand millennial atheists. Gen Z kids coming up now cannot stand millennial atheists. And you don't have to be a preacher to uh, to see that. Uh, I'm sorry. Anybody else got anything? Well, I mean, I can uh, show them how they can save 6% um, on money, say I'm um, switching to um, Geico. 15% wow. <laughs> or more in your car insurance. Well, I'm switching to Geico. Yeah, I I feel like I feel like I see the I, I see the same thing. I, it's basically a race to the bottom. You like I said with with a Bill Burr comedy routine or Jim Jeffries comedy routine or or, 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 or the or the Fat Elvis routine where you just don't give a shit anymore. Yeah, yeah. I I mean I mean it's 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 a race to see who can be the most glib, who can be the most superficial, who can be the most dismissive. Uh, and it's really just corrosive at the end of the day. And I, I think it's it's fitting uh, uh, that he's a wrestling commentator. And this might upset some people. But I do think there was a, a man-boy culture that particularly came to a head in the late 90s, uh, spilling over into the early 2000s. And I think... Uh, you had. I'm not. This is not a criticism of all these guys, but you had guys like Howard Stern and Tom Lakus and Adam Carolla and Joe yeah. Rogan, and just the, the whole man boy culture, where it's we're comfortable first world guys. We're in our man caves. We're not challenging ourselves. We're very comfortable, and anything we don't like is stupid, and we're just going to trivialize anything that is lofty or beautiful because it challenges us. 
in, in our dank little, uh, 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 you know, sweaty uh, man caves. And so I really think uh, uh, mm -hmm. New Atheism was really kind of born of this milieu. Uh, and and I, I, throw, I throw the the shock jocks and the man show guys. Uh, and it's not a girl, like I even like Howard Stern, but I think the time has come where we can see the limits of, of that kind of mentality, where we just try to drag everything down to the base level. Uh, I think it's it's really starting to chafe, and it's really gotten old. Uh, amen. Amen, it has. I mean, really, uh, uh, I could be an atheist and be better than most of them. Yes. I really could. I really could. I would have bought out some Sartre, some Nietzsche, some Hume. I, 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 if uh, Nietzsche and Sartre were alive today, they'd probably spit on these guys. They would, they would commit suicide and become Catholic. They would be that upset by these people. That's what I I truly believe. That's what Nietzsche. Or, or, or Nietzsche will probably laugh himself to death after reading uh, the God Delusion. Oh my God! I know. <laughs> could you, could you picture up. Nietzsche laughing? <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, let's have some final thoughts and close this out because um, I'm going to have a, an offer for Jim, uh, an offer I'll repeat for Steve McRae and for a few others because really you've got to get out of atheism. But who's, uh, Last chance and final thoughts. Who's got one? Bring back the 90s. All right, you're done. Thank you, White Engine. And who else has a final thought that they want to get out? Um, this video. Yeah. Robert? Oh, you go, Robert. Yeah. Um, this video was just so bad. Um, it almost wasn't worth responding to just how, because of its, you know, sheer amount of ignorance. But I, I'm glad we did it anyway. That's my final thought. Thank you, Robert. You're always a treasure to have on. Brass, you had a final thought? Yes. I want to say that it was nice, you know, being able to debunk a celebrity atheist. I kind of consider this like, you know, a Memorial Day special debunking of an atheist. You know, it's a holiday, so we have to get a holiday-worthy person. So, yeah, this was good. I love this. And we also got to see Mad Michigan Max mode again, so this was great, too. I, I did rant. I did rant again. I'm good at it. All right. Dar uh, uh, gay, gay Wad, go ahead. You got a final thought? I'm teasing you. All right, Derek. All right, no final thoughts from Derek. Uh, deflating, did you get your final thought, or did you have one? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I don't know how, how much of a celebrity this guy is, but, yeah, there are, there are a lot of guys like this saying a lot of stupid shit. That's all the same. It, it's basically boilerplate. All right. Well, here's going to be my final thought for Jim Cornette. It's actually for Steve McRae. It's actually for a few others that I can tell have real talent. And I do think Jim Cornette has some talent. I think Steve McRae has talent. I think a few others in that community do. Shannon, although I give her a hard time because I don't like her. Uh, uh, Godless Cranium, he's actually got talent. Uh, 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 a few others. Logic actually has some talent. It's wasted, but he has it. All you guys and a few of you others who have real talent and real ambitions should realize, even, even if you bought into atheism and made some investments, it's not a growth field. And you don't have to become a Christian fundamentalist or a Christian to uh, get out of it. There's religious, interesting people all over the place. They're not all Christian. Yes, I'm Christian, and I'd like you to be Christian with me, but I'm not the kind of Christian. I'm, I'm nothing like somebody like, say, uh, we're nothing like somebody like, say, um, uh, Christian anarchist, you know, Calvinist, King James Bible, Bible literalist, all that crap. Um, but even outside of the Christians, there's fast. I've had so many fascinating conversations with Orthodox Jews. I've had so many fascinating conversations with Hindus. I've had so many fascinating, uh, enlightening conversations with people of other religions. Yes, even Muslims. Um, y y you're on a winnings. You're on a losing strategy, guys. This was the hot hip thing more than ten years ago, and you're aging and you're looking bad now. Because this is not where the kids are. Gen Z can't handle atheism. They can't stand it. They see atheism as something to rebel against. Jim Cornette, I'm going to repeat to you and to any of the other people I've mentioned, the kids today, because none of you are kids anymore, the kids today, the Gen Zs, see you, you snotty atheists, as people to rebel against. 
you're you're not the new kid on the block anymore. You're old and middle aged and boring, and you're someone to re to to rebel against. At some point, you should realize, you know what? There's lots of reasons to think that there's something more than what science can show us, and there's and religious and spiritual people are everywhere. Shouldn't I make friends with them? Doesn't their money spend those spiritual people, whatever their spirituality? Doesn't their money spend? Aren't they at least interesting? Don't I want them as my audience too? Um, don't I want more friends, more family who have ideas I don't necessarily share, but at least interesting? The vi atheist victim posturing is also looking pretty old. It really, really is. Oh, I'm a victim because I'm an atheist. Stop it. There are people who give atheists a hard time, but religious people get shit on all the time now. In fact, Jim Cornette, you and your atheist goons, friends for the last 10, 15 years have helped make it, establish it, that Christians and other religious people will get mocked and made fun of on a regular basis. Time to find another target because otherwise it gets old. And there's a whole world of people with money and ideas out there who aren't atheists you ought to explore. All right, everybody, please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. Please uh, check us out on redpillreligion.com. Uh, we're here every night. Um, and uh, please thank everybody. Deflating Atheism, still one, my, one of my favorite YouTube channels. Derek, uh, gay atheist anarchist. Mr. Brass, um, Dimitri, Robert, uh, White Engine. Appreciate you all so much. And thank you so much for being here. Um, the anti-atheist, uh, uh, true rationalist movement is continuing to move um, and continuing to grow. So please find us on redpillreligion.com and God bless.